Hello peeps, guess what? It's another time for tea and a chat. Hello YouTubers, it's the Man Mechanic here. Tea, a cup of tea. How do we make a decent cup of tea? And what is the history of how the British drink so much of it? I'll tell you what, let's find out. Tea. Here we go. We're going to talk about the different ways of making tea. We're going to talk about loose tea. Now loose tea is the tea that comes in packets. It's just loose. Um, and we're going to mainly talk about the black loose tea. We're not going to talk about China loose tea because that's quite perfumey uh, and it's not really, it's not really tea is it? It's more like drinking a flower petal. Um, but we're going to talk about black Indian tea. It's mainly the tea that the British do drink. Um, and it's what the Americans call English tea. But it's what they call loose tea. We're going to make tea with loose tea. We're also going to make tea with tea bags. Now, there are two ways of making tea with tea bags. There's the way that I make it, which is the proper way. And there's the way that the devil makes it and will be spurned and sent to damnation for the rest of your life if you make tea this way okay now there's two ways also we're going to talk about bottled canned and instant tea now bottled and canned tea and instant tea should be struck from history it is not real tea it is awful stuff in instant tea ice cold tea pray tell what is that all about forget it get rid of it destroy it it should be wiped from all history the first record of tea in english came from a letter by richard wickham who ran the east india company office in japan and that was written in 1615 Tea was sold in the coffee houses in London in 1657. Samuel Pepys also tasted tea in 1660 and Queen Catherine took the tea drinking habit to the English court when she married Charles II in 1662. Tea, however, was not widely consumed in the British Isles until the 18th century and remained expensive until the later part of the period. English drinkers preferred to add sugar and milk to the black tea and black tea overtook green tea in popularity in the 1720s. Tea smuggling during the 18th century led to the general public being able to afford and consume tea. The British government removed the tax on tea, therefore eliminating the smuggling trade by 1785. In Britain and Ireland, tea was initially consumed as a luxury item on special occasions such as religious festivals, wakes and domestic work gatherings. The price of tea therefore fell very steadily during the 19th century, especially after Indian tea began to arrive in very large quantities and by the late 19th century tea had become an everyday beverage for all levels of society. The popularity of tea played a role in historical events. And also, my American friends would know this, the Act, Tea Act of 1773 provoked the Boston Tea Party that escalated into the American Revolution or War. The need to address the issue of British trade deficit because of the trade in tea resulted in opium wars. Now, what you understand is, is that Great Britain at the time was the biggest drug smuggling cartel. The Chinese emperor had banned foreign products from being sold in China, decreeing in 1685 that all goods brought from China must be paid for in silver coin or bullion. Traders from other nations then sought to find another product, in this case opium, to sell to China and to earn back the silver they were required to pay for tea and other commodities. The subsequent attempts by the Chinese government to curtail the trade ended in the Opium Wars. Hello peeps, here we are. Now we're going to make some tea. Now we need some, 
some bits and pieces. Now, what do we need to make a cup of tea with loose tea? Well, first of all, we need a teapot, a decent teapot that will hold tea. We need the tea itself. There we go, nice bit of loose tea. I haven't got a clue what make it is, but it doesn't matter. We need a tea strainer, right? Two, because what happens is when you actually get the tea out of the, the teapot, you're gonna get loose tea. So you don't want your tea in your teacup, unless, unless you're of the gypsy persuasion, um, and then you'll probably read someone's fortune with the tea. Anyway, then we need milk, and we need two cups, and sugar to taste. So this is how we start to make, oh, most important thing I forgot, it's a tea cozy, which goes on top of the kettle to keep it nice and warm. Right, the first thing we need to do is we need to boil the kettle. No, we don't use warm water like some coffee machines. We use boiling water. Boiling water is the best way to make a decent cup of tea. You want to infuse the tea. You don't want it to sort of sit there and go, oh, I'm not sure what's going on here. You want the tea to go, I want tea to be in this boiling water. And you want a hot cup of tea. You don't want cold cups of tea. You don't want lukewarm cups of tea. It's got to be a boiling cup of tea. So the first thing we have to do is to boil the kettle and warm the pot. Right, we've got the kettle boiled. It's not lukewarm, it's not cold, it's not tepid, it's boiling hot. The first thing we do is get the cups out of the way and we pour hot water, boiling hot water, into the teapot. And then what we do then is we then, oh, as we pour it all over the place, we then warm the teapot up. The teapot needs to be nice and warm. Because if you put hot water in this teapot and it's still cold, you're gonna get cold water, aren't you? You're gonna get warm water and we don't need that. So we get the, we get the pot nice and warm and we keep it warm. That's lovely and warm. Right, as in the, as in the um, history of the, of the program Blue Peter, this is one I've done earlier. Right, now the, the pot's nice and warm. We need to add tea. The best way to do this is to figure out how many people you are having for a cup of tea. Now, as there's only two cups, there's gonna be two people here. Well, I'm gonna show you um, the two ways of adding milk to tea. One the proper way, one the devil way. Okay, so what we do, we add two, teaspoons of loose tea into the teapot. I always go half extra, because I like a nice strong cup of tea. I don't like a weak tea. My dad used to say he likes the old Sergeant Major's tea where you can stand a, stand a spoon up in it. Right, what we need to do now, as the kettle's still boiled, we add a lovely, look how, look how hot that is. That is hot as, hot as mustard. All right, there's the top of the tea bag. The tea bag, uh, not tea bags. The tea is in there. Now what we need to do is to keep it nice and warm because we need to now put the glorified tea cozy on and let that marinate for a few minutes. Stirring every now and again. So every couple of minutes, just give it a stir and you'll find out the texture of the tea you want. Every now and again, give the tea a bit of a stir. Get the old tea leaves whizzing around a little bit more. Get it nicely going. Get its juices flowing. Lush. This beverage built an empire. This fought off Nazi Germany. Now, the kettle, or the, not kettle, the teapot is now ready to go. That's been infused now for about four or five minutes, five minutes at the most, right? Now, we need cups. Now, this is the bit that people get wrong, or they get right. It's up to people's choice. But I know which way I go right, first of all, which is the proper way. Now, in the late 17th and early 18th centuries, you had the Industrial Revolution up north. Uh, you had the mill owners, and they found that if they stopped every two hours and gave their employees a cup of tea out of a big tea urn, um, they would work better. 
they would work um, a lot, lot, lot easier um, after their up to their fourteen-hour day shifts, <laughs> six, five and a half days a week. Um, so what had used to happen is is that they used to bring a tea urn down round, but they found that they had really, really cheap and cheerful earthware cups. So as soon as they poured the tea straight into the cup, the bottom of the teacup fell out. So they found that if they used fresh milk and dropped a little bit of milk in the bottom of the teacup first of all, then poured the hot milk, uh, the hot tea in, you'll find that the tea then wouldn't just take the tepidism out of it so it wouldn't break the cups. Hence the expression, tea break. Aye, aye. Right, so there's two ways of doing this. So what we do first of all, we'll add a bit of milk first of all to the first one, and then we'll add the milk secondly to the second one, right? Now, everyone's got a preference really. Um, some people like tea, that's what they call Sergeant Major's tea, which the, um, the teaspoon stands up in the tea, or people like a very weak tea. Me personally speaking, I like a real strong tea. I like a tea that reflects me, strong and manly. <laughs> anyway, so what we do first of all, we pour a little bit of drop of milk, not very much, just enough in the bottom, so you can see it, and then we take the tea cover off, we give it a last little stir, so we give the tea a last little stir, stir. oh, then we throw it all over the place, which is good, isn't it, eh? look at that, eh? right, and then we have a tea strainer. Now, the purpose of the tea strainer is obviously to take the tea out of the teacup and in there, because you're using loose tea, you're not using a tea bag. So, you generally, look at that, that is a colour to behold. That is a tea, like I said before, that is a tea that built an empire. That is a tea that you would have with a massive, great big fry up breakfast. Eh? That built an empire. That defeated Nazi Germany. That's the substance that made Britain have a word great in front of it. Now that's that one. That's the one with the milk in the, in, in the teacup first of all. The other way of doing it is to put the milk in secondly. There's no real difference. What you'll find is, is if you put the milk in second, I find it slightly not as smooth. It's more of a bittery taste or a bit of a bitter taste so you add the tea to the tea cup like that get rid of that which as we tipped all over the table there's the tea there now some people like or some Connollys uh, Connollys what's the word what sort of word is that um, some of the English speaking world <laughs> some of the English speaking world would drink tea like this you find a lot of Turkish people and things like that. Turkish uh, and, and Indians and stuff like that will drink tea, right? But then what you what you can do is if you add a little drop of milk, you're adding milk to your taste. So if you want a nice, strongish cup of tea, you don't add so much milk. If you want a weaker cup of tea and it's a little bit colder, you add a bit more milk. Now, there's the two teas. There's the one with the milk in first of all, the proper way. This is the usurper way that was with the milk in second. Not really my cup of tea. <laughs> but anyway, so there it is tea made with rude tea. The tea bag, or making tea with a tea bag. Now, it's much the same process as making loose tea, but obviously, the tea is contained in a tea bag. Now, in 1907, an American tea merchant, Thomas Sullivan, began distributing his tea in little tiny bags. Now, it was an accident that people actually used to put these in their tea cups to make tea. And they weren't, that wasn't the purpose of it. He used to ship them in little tea bags like this. So they're easy, just used to rip the top off, pour the tea into like loose tea, and, and jobs are good. But they used to use it by just putting it straight into into their cups. Now, during the Second World War, obviously, um, tea was rationed. And after the Second World War, it wasn't until 1953 where a fir an English firm called Tetley produced the first English tea bag. And that 
was an immediate success. Right, here we go again. Making tea with tea bags. It's basically the same as loose tea, but without a teapot. And it's more convenient and it makes a quicker cup of tea in some respects. Some people like tea bag tea more than loose tea. Some people for loose tea more than tea bag tea. So what we do first of all, there's two ways of making a cup of tea with tea bags. The first way is to tea bag in boiling water. Again, it's boiling water. It's not lukewarm. It's not coffee machine water. It's boiling water. And we add the water to the tea bag. Now what we're doing now, we're letting it fuse and we're going to let it let it sort of bring out the tea in the tea bag. Some people like this. This is the wrong way to make tea, by the way. This is we're going back to the Industrial Revolution again. This is not how you make tea. But anyway, so what you do is you then stir it. Nice hot cup of tea until you find the actual um, color that you want in some respects. Um, I find that this cup of tea is like very much like a loose tea when you put the milk in second. It makes it a little bit um, bittery for some other reason. Right, so that's that's the colour that you're not quite sure what it is. You then <laughs> burn your hands on the tea bag and stir the tea as you pour the milk in second. So the milk goes in second, and what it's done, what it tends to do as you pour milk all over the place, you then find the colour of the tea that you want. Add sugar to taste. There's a cup of tea with the milk in second. The wrong way, the devil way. The devil way. Let's move that out of the way, just in case it gets to me. The right way to make tea with tea bags is you add the milk. You add the milk for as much as you want. So I like a strong cup of tea. So I add a little bit of milk, pop the tea bag in, pour boiling water over it, then you'll find that the tea is now a smoother tea because because the milk as a gain just taking it off the boil a little bit you can then add the color that you want so now if you want a weak cup of tea that's the ideal tea for you and you can keep stirring and keep stirring keep infusing keep moving that tea bag around infuse the tea with the hot water until you get start getting the color that you actually want and this is what i find is a much smoother cup of tea a much nicer cup of tea and not a devil worshipping usurper cup of tea a wannabe cup of tea that is not quite a cup so that's the color i like so i get it nice and what's name ha ha oh, get the hot tea bag out one sugar to taste there is a cup of tea that is made with the milk in first now you find what you'll find that there's no difference really some people like it with the milk in first some people who will be nameless who should be locked in prisons for the rest of their life like tea with the milk in second I'd like your comments on this one, whether you like it first or you like it second. But whatever way you drink it, this beverage defeated Nazi Germany. Always remember that. That built an empire. I really hope you enjoy these videos. I hope it's made it clear for you how to make tea the proper way and the, and the different variants of milk in first, milk in second, there's a lot of people, there are, and I must confess, there are in England, some very, very hot debates about milk in first, milk in second. But I hope you enjoyed these videos. If you do, please subscribe. Please like the like button. Please, I don't know, slap your dog, kick your cat. Um, and get back to me as soon as you can. We've got some more videos coming, different subjects. Um, enjoy your afternoon. I've now got over COVID now, just about. I'm still... I'm showing positive, but we're getting better now. 
Anyway, take care of yourselves now. Have a good afternoon and see you.